All right, this RAV4 EV has a motor with a coolant leak, so it needs a rebuild. I contacted Toyota, they cannot do it because they broke up with Tesla, so they cannot get any parts because it has a Tesla motor in it. I contacted Tesla, they will not do it because it's a Toyota. The closest shop that can do this is QC Charge, and it's 480 miles away from me. They charge $4,000, plus I have to pay uh, transportation, uh, put this car on a trailer, $750 there and $750 back. So the total would be $5,500 for a rebuild plus transportation. That's a lot of money. I am going to try to do it myself at home, right here in the garage. And uh, the purpose of this YouTube channel is to uh, show how I do that. So hopefully it will uh, succeed and if it, uh, if it fails that makes for good entertainment as well. So the previous owner of this car gave me all the paperwork of all the repairs from Toyota printouts and the motor has been swapped out already twice under warranty. Right now it's not under warranty anymore. The paperwork also interestingly showed that internally Toyota charged $700 for a swap in labor which assuming $100 per hour amounts to 7 hours of labor for a swap. If you want to, if you wanted to um, uh, replace the, the the motor uh, with a Toyota, they would charge roughly eight to ten thousand dollars, which is double that uh, what would be charged for a full rebuild at QC Charge. But as I said in the beginning, right now Toyota does not even offer any repair or replacement of the motor anymore. In today's episode, we'll make a plan how to lift the car enough so we can drop the motor and pull it out without interfering with other parts of the car. After that, we're going to follow as much as possible the garage manual from Toyota. Uh, you can download it from the TIS part of the Toyota website. It's a technical information system. You can have a subscription for two days for $20 and then uh, download and print uh, all the official manuals. I'll uh, put a link down below. This is the motor, or it's actually called the uh, large drive unit uh, made by Tesla. It contains a motor section and the gearbox in the middle and then the inverter. Not to be confused by thinking that that's a second motor. That's just the inverter in a cylinder casing. And the, uh, the weight 290 pounds, 12 inch high and some other dimensions. You can buy a car lift like this for $3,000 or so, but we are going to keep it cheap. I bought this transmission lift for $100 with a coupon at Harbor Freight. The maximum load is 450 pounds. The height range is uh, also indicated here. So let's see if this fits. Uh, I'll put a link down below for this product. All right, the drive unit is located here, roughly eight inches in front of the front axle. The transmission lift is right here. The car will be lifted roughly 17 and a half inch. 15 inches is the max height of my um, check stands and then two and a half inch stack of wooden sheets. The transmission lift will uh, be used to drop the motor and then this uh, height of the car will be enough to have enough clearance so that the drive unit will not hit uh, the car. Uh, also for safety, we're going to put the front wheels of the car uh, below the car uh, between the two check stands just for safety. Now we are officially starting the rebuild. Take a picture of your dashboard for future reference. Roll down the driver's side window. In case something goes wrong, you can always uh, access the car. Then turn off the car. And then we have to wait a minute before disconnecting the 12 volt battery because the computer still has to store some information. And then we pop the hood. Right next, wear some safety gloves, some safety glo goggles. Uh, open the, the hood and remove the negative clamp from the battery. There we go, tuck it away. That's it. So next we're going to remove the uh, so-called safety plug grip, which is the most important uh, safety step in this uh, whole rebuild, I would say. So you're going to scoot forward the passenger seat all the way, and you're going to uh, pull this up over here, and you see uh, a couple of uh, wing nuts or uh, 
normal nuts depending on your car and you have to uh, remove all four of those so we're going to do that uh, next so note that I'm wearing uh, thick rubber gloves just for uh, safety for extra safety uh, next we're going to pull off the uh, plastic cover now that we have removed all four, the, four of the nuts there we go and the next step is we have to uh, I'll zoom it in a little bit okay next we're going to uh, pull up this black lever all the way and then pull out the, uh, the orange thing and so it seems to be a fuse and that's that now we have to wait for 10 minutes before working on the high voltage system to let the capacitors uh, slowly discharge uh, also we're going to put this on the dashboard for safety that's a uh, best practice that I learned from a QC charge and uh, I put the, uh, the washers and the nuts in the, in the black thing over here also we're going to uh, for safety just uh, put back the uh, carpet there we go Also from now on the Toyota instructions uh, clearly say that do not turn on the car anymore because it may create some kind of error. So don't hook up the 12 volt battery anymore, just leave it alone from now on. Next we are going to remove the motor under cover assembly. It has 8 uh, screws with a socket M M10, you can loosen it and 11 clips but I think most of the clips here are uh, missing. Okay, the cover is off it's way easier to do that when the car has been lifted but I want to drain the fluids while the car is still horizontal and that's why I um, pulled off the cover uh, right now while trying to push my body between the car and the ground to get it off also make sure that when you do this the car is on the handbrake so it doesn't roll over you next we're going to drain the coolant so we're going to loosen this cap so it's gonna pull in some air through this uh, little hole over here but first we're draining the coolant on the, uh, the driver's side of the car so we go underneath and then uh, ooh, there's this hose over here hose clamp we're going to remove that hose clamp and then catch the coolant in the pan I'm going to put my down my phone for that so there it goes coolant is flowing out In the meantime, I also removed the plastic cover on the driver's side that was between the, the wheel and the motor and uh, it uh, is removed in a similar fashion as uh, on the passenger side as what I did in the previous episode where I was uh, checking for the coolant uh, leak. Next we're going to drain the coolant on the passenger side of the car so we're going to remove, or remove this clamp, pull the hose off and then uh, drain it in the pan as well and I'm going to remove this black uh, piece of plastic here with this uh, bolt over here and maybe drain out some more so I also pulled out this black hose connector on the passenger side and at that same time more coolant came out of the motor and at the same time on the driver side even more coolant came out so make sure you have uh, something to catch it on both sides simultaneously Next I measured the amount of coolant, so when I refill the coolant later on, at least this amount should uh, go back in. And in my case I measured uh, 3400 milliliters of coolant. Next we're going to remove the 12 volt battery, so that's easy, just uh, unbolt the positive terminal. Then there's a, a nut here and here, uh, loosen it, tear the bracket out, pull out the uh, battery. Okay, next we're going to uh, remove this component. It's for fast charging. It's an aftermarket uh, thing installed by the uh, previous owner. So we're going to uh, have to remove these two uh, bolts here, but this hose is in the way, so we have to remove that first. And this hose is like 
bolted down back there. So we're going to do that. And on, on the other side, there's also like uh, three bolts that we're going to remove. Okay, the fast charging components has been unbolted. Uh, the torque was uh, five foot pounds for all five of the bolts. And now we can access and remove the three bolts uh, there down below. So what I'm doing with all these uh, bolts that have like a, a very significant uh, structural uh, function is uh, I put a black mark on both the bolt and also uh, on the frame right next to it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, trust me on that. And then I'll uh, loosen them with a breaker bar. Do not use a torque wrench to loosen bolts. And then I'm going to immediately um, fasten them with a, with a torque wrench uh, with incrementally increasing values until I uh, know at which torque it is fastened. And I, uh, then I can compare it to the uh, Toyota uh, instructions and see if it's roughly the same. The three bolts are out, one, two, three. The measured torque was 70, which is 70 uh, foot pound, which, ma which matches the uh, prescribed torque. The rest of the motor removal will be done after lifting the car. Make sure when you lift the car to release the handbrake so the car can freely rotate around the back axle. Make sure you have uh, wheel chocks in front of and behind each back wheel. I'm going to lift the car with this emergency uh, jack I don't have a floor jack and I'm going to support the car after that on a one jack stand on each side the jack stand has a rubber pad be sure to use those Toyota recommends that as well and so the jack stand will touch the car between these two notches which means that I have to lift up the car somewhere else for example here and uh, before you do that there's some holes in that vicinity so it's not the strongest point of the car Remove these uh, rubbers from the holes, otherwise they uh, get damaged. Now the car is up. After lifting the car, I applied the handbrake. Now it is time to remove the front wheels and put them below the car. All right, the front wheels are off. Put them below the car. Put some two by fours on top of the tires. So if the jack stands break, the car would only fall by an inch or so. That's it for this episode. Next episode, we will continue removing the motor from this car.